In the last few weeks, a lot of posts have been circulating on various social media platforms, citing that the ozone layer has started to miraculously heal due to the current lockdown. So, in this video, we will try to understand whether this healing of the ozone layer is actually linked to the lockdown caused by coronavirus or there are some other reasons for this recovery. Now, let us firstly understand what is ozone and why is it important. Ozone is a colorless gas, its chemical formula being O3. Chemically, ozone is very active. It reacts readily with a great many other substances. It is a very dangerous gas and had it been near Earth's surface, it would have proved to be immensely harmful as it can cause rubber to crack, it can damage the crops and trees and majorly damage people's lung tissues. Fortunately, ozone is found 20 to 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface in the lower portion of the stratosphere. Ozone plays a major role in absorbing the harmful components of sunlight, known as ultraviolet B or UVB. The ozone layer was discovered in 1913 by the French physicists Charles Fabry and Henri Buisson. High above the surface of the Earth and even above the weather systems, a tenacious layer of ozone gas successfully absorbs the harmful rays of the sun, the UVBs or ultraviolet B, and therefore manages to protect the living things below. Now what damage can possibly these rays cause? So the excessive exposure to ultraviolet rays can lead to a number of problems. Sunburn, suntan and faster aging of the skin, and individuals with fairer skin will be more prone to sunburn than people with darker skin. It can also lead to non-melanoma skin cancers. This type of skin cancer is most frequent on parts of the body that are commonly exposed to the sun, such as ears, face, neck and forearms. Fortunately, this type of cancer is more localized and curable in most cases. However, at times the exposure can cause melanoma skin cancer, which is a major cause of death from skin cancer and is more likely to be reported and accurately diagnosed than non-melanoma skin cancers. It can also damage the eyes. The eyes are shielded by eyebrows and the eyelashes. However, the effectiveness of these natural defenses in protecting against the dangers of UV radiation is limited. The acute effects of UV radiation may lead to inflammatory reactions, which are comparable to a sunburn. This can be very painful, but this damage is generally reversible and does not result in any long-term damage to the eye or vision. The exposure to the UVB is also a risk factor for cataract development. UV rays can also affect the immune system. Ozone is measured in what are called Dobson units. Now, what do we understand by the Dobson unit? A Dobson unit of gas is equal to a layer of gas at the surface of the earth with a thickness of one hundredth of a millimeter. The average concentration of the ozone in the atmosphere is about 300 Dobson units and anywhere the concentration drops to below 220 Dobson units is considered a hole. The ozone hole is not actually a hole but it is a region of depleted ozone in the stratosphere. So, let's make this simpler by showing you a color graded scale of the concentration of the ozone. As we move from left to right, we see the ozone becoming denser and this is good news. The 1970s and the 80s saw the international community becoming increasingly concerned with the damage being caused to ozone layer by the ozone depleting substances. It was in the year 1976 when an atmospheric research team revealed that the ozone layer was depleting because of the chemicals released by the industries, mainly the chlorofluorocarbons. The Antarctic ozone hole was discovered in 1985 by the British scientists. So, for the first time in 1985, an environmental agreement, the Vienna Convention of for the Protection of the Ozone Layer was signed. It provided frameworks for international reductions in the production of chlorofluorocarbons due to their contribution to the destruction of the ozone layer. It paved the way for the Montreal Protocol, an international treaty designed to protect the ozone layer by phasing out the production of numerous substances that are responsible for ozone depletion. 
This protocol was adopted on the 15th of September 1987 and till date remains the only UN treaty ever that has been ratified by every country on earth, all 197 UN member states. This was a landmark multilateral environmental agreement that regulates the production and consumption of nearly 100 man-made chemicals referred to as ozone depleting substances, ODS. When released to the atmosphere, these chemicals damage the stratospheric ozone layer. The Montreal Protocol phases down the consumption and production of the different ODS in a stepwise manner with different timetables for developed and developing countries. Under this treaty, all parties have specific responsibilities related to the phase out of the different groups of ODS, control of ODS trade, annual reporting of data, national licensing systems to control ODS imports and exports, and other matters. Developing and developed countries have equal but differentiated responsibilities, but most importantly, both groups of countries have binding, time-targeted, and measurable commitments. The parties to the Montreal Protocol have amended this protocol several times to achieve their goals in light of new scientific, technical, and economic developments, and it continues to be amended and adjusted till date. There have been five major amendments to the Montreal Protocol. The most recent amendment, the Kigali Amendment, called for the phase down of hydrofluorocarbons, HFCs, in 2016. These HFCs were used as replacements for ozone depleting substances, eliminated by the original Montreal Protocol. Although they do not deplete the ozone layer, they are known to be powerful greenhouse gases and thus contributors to climate change. Uncontrolled growth in HFC emissions therefore challenges efforts to keep global temperature rise at or below 2 degrees Celsius this century. Urgent action on HFCs is needed to protect the climate system. Countries agreed to add HFCs to the list of controlled substances and approved a timeline for their gradual reduction by 80 to 85 percent by the late 2040s. So as we see, the Montreal Protocol and its various amendments provided a set of practical, actionable tasks that were universally agreed on. The protocol has successfully met its objectives thus far and continues to safeguard the ozone layer today. Thanks to the collaborative effort of nations around the world, the ozone layer is well on its way to recovery and is expected to be fully healed by the middle of the 21st century. So, had it not been for the scientists who had made accurate predictions of heavy losses and to the policy makers who acted without any delay on those predictions, our world today would have been an altogether a different place. Had we let the chlorofluorocarbons increase by a 3% each year starting from the 1970s, by the middle of 21st century, we would have lost about two thirds of the ozone layer. We wouldn't have been able to step outside for long durations due to the impacts caused by more exposure to the UV rays. This depletion would mean more skin diseases, cancers, cataract problems, the eye problems, impact on the immune system, impact on the crops, virtually whatever you can think of, since we would be talking about nearly a 300% or a tenfold increase of UV changes. But with the full and sustained implementation of the Montreal Protocol, the ozone layer is projected to recover by the 2050. It has been assessed, for example, that the Montreal Protocol is saving an estimated 2 million people each year from skin cancer. Till date, the parties involved with the protocol have successfully phased out 98% of ODS globally compared to 1990 levels. And because most of these substances are powerful greenhouse gases, the Montreal Protocol is also making a significant contribution to the protection of the global climate system. Even though the fact that the lockdown is surely showing some promising signs of nature restoring itself, the restoration of the ozone layer is actually the result of the Montreal Protocol and its amendments.